Hey, April here at Carolina Paddleboard Company, Hobie Team Rider. We had a question from the 100-100 group on pivot turns or buoy turns from Julie Nichols. Um, and here to join us in a buoy turning education is Jenna Bunting, also a member of the 100-100 Paddle Challenge. So Julie, do you want to elaborate a little bit on uh, the problem with the Briefly. pivot turns? Yes. They're bigger than they are, they get scary, and it's silly. I just know that in a lot of the races, I approach a buoy and I get hesitant, I slow down, I go wide, and now everybody I'm with is 200 yards ahead of me. And um, it's just inefficient. Also, with having shoulder surgery, trying to protect the shoulder, you know, not ugh, muscling everything with the shoulders, trying to find an efficient, fast, um, stable way to turn is why I'm here today. All right. So since she posted that thread on the 100-100, it seems like a lot of people are very interested in perfecting or at least improving their pivot turns. So that's what we are here to do today. Um, hopefully, I'll be able to educate you about the easiest ways to go about uh, doing this buoy turn and also the science behind it. So. When I'm doing a step back buoy turn, I'm taking anywhere from five to eight strokes and it's so wide so wide that it's like ridiculous. I'm nowhere near the buoy by the time I turn. If we take a closer look at Julie's turns prior to class, we'll notice that she's stepping back off the center line of the board, causing the board to roll and become unstable and lose momentum. Using too many steps, and then she's using her shoulders instead of her torso to turn. Even then, her sweep stroke isn't out far enough. Then, if we look at Jenna, she's walking down the center line of her board, even though she is sidestepping, which is okay. But she's also using too much shoulder in her stroke and not using a wide or long enough sweep stroke. For both cases, we need to review some terminology first. Once you accept that you're probably gonna get a little wet while practicing for buoy turns, you might wanna know the science behind said buoy turns. So let's talk a little bit about boards. Bring it up and down. So, you can yaw your board this way, you can roll your board this way, and you can pitch your board this way. So when we're doing a buoy turn, we're actually using all three of these planes of rotation. When we get back and we're ready to start our buoy turn, we want to be right back here, right? How do you move back to the back of your board? Step back. Step back. So you've got one foot here and one foot here. And what do you do, Julie? Hobble back. <laughs> you step, 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 right? Yes. Hobble. So hobble, hobble, let's, hobble. here's a cross section of your board and here's your feet, the point of your board. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. This is the axis about which the board rolls, right? Where could you apply force? on this board that no roll would occur. In the middle? Right in the middle. So you got the center line of the board and your feet are usually here balancing one another out so that you don't get roll. But when it comes time to step back on the board to do your pivot turn, you want to minimize roll. Right? So if you lift up this foot and you're applying pressure on this foot, it's going to apply pressure out here off the center of the board causing it to roll, correct? However, if you apply the pressure only down the middle, we're going to minimize roll and you're going to have a really smooth walk back. Let's, That's pretend, a shadow. let's pretend this is the center line of your board, right? Right here. Um, and you, you're standing here. That's where I stand. I'm going to get ready. I'm going to angle my feet. My toe is on the center line and my heel is on the center line, right? I'm going to put my weight on my toe and my heel. 
I'm not applying weight out here because that'll create roll. I'm not applying weight out here because that'll create roll. Um, so I've got these footy prints where I'm only applying pressure to the center line, toe side, heel side. So as I come back, I'm weighting the heel, pressure on the toe. Weight on the heel, pressure on the toe. And you should only have to take one or two steps. Standing, I'm getting ready. I slide this foot back, I'm getting ready to weight the heel only. I'm not gonna roll, roll, roll my board. I'm gonna apply pressure to only the center line. Pressure in the center line. Pressure in the center line. And then once I'm back, I can more like I can distribute that pressure back now once I'm back further because you're gonna need to control roll and pitch. So you can't control pitch up on your toe and heel. You'll have to redistribute your weight. And a reason you might not want to bounce um, would be because you're causing deceleration on the board. Um, you can still apply pressure, some drag to that board when you shuffle back. Then, once we get to the back, we're here, our feet are still side by side. We don't have any control over the pitch of our board. We're now in a less stable position on the board, and the best way to, to be there, you would want to move a foot or two. It's more difficult to move your stance once you're on the less stable part of the board. Reasons you might want to shuffle back or your shimmy back or bounce back would include um, not feeling as stable or just feeling better. I've done it, um, but as you get further back, you need to shuffle and shuffle. get that, that leg back. You're gonna have to shuffle harder on one side so that you can control that pitch. Controlling that pitch is critical uh, to not eating it. We've now gotten the board to pitch. It's, it's up like this and you're here, ta-da! I like to keep my one leg closer to this big center um, for you know uh, maneuverability and control. Because when you're feeling really at not balanced, if both of your feet are way back here, you can't recover. Um, if you keep one foot up higher on the board, you have that potential to re-weight, unpitch the board. So you, you pitch the board up by leaning on that back foot. And oh, oh crap, it's a little too much. Lean the forward. So when you find that sweet spot, the magical spot on the board that you're on uh, that enables you just to, you can tap the nose in the water, lift the nose out of the water, tap it and lift it really easily, you know you're in the right spot. All right, now we want to turn. So when you want to paddle straight in a straight line, we have our, board, uh, our paddle vertical, correct? Straight up and down because we want to go that way. Now we want the board to go this way. We actually want it opposite. We want it as close to horizontal as we can get it. So, so instead of applying your back here, you don't want to paddle like this because that's not going to give you the momentum you need. You want to draw a big half circle in the water as far, as far as possible. Fill around um, back past the back of the board to get the you can do the turn in as little as one stroke that's another question I have is when you like if you're turning right do you step back with your right foot if you're turning left do you step back with your left foot or if I'm always more comfortable on my left foot step back can I go left and right that way or is it this way that way does that make sense we already established that your your dominant side, if you're right dominant, it's easier to turn left. If you're left dominant, it's easier to turn right. Um, if you're paddling on the opposite side, so like me, my right foot's back, I need to make a right hand turn. I do not like putting my left foot back. Some people like to go both ways. I do not. Um, so I am going to do little turns on my my left side so I'm I'm probably at max gonna get about 90 degrees in if I turn on my left whereas on my right I can get uh, 180 maybe 270 uh, degrees of rotation which means I could turn further with one stroke on my right side but sometimes I like the speed of the little strokes on my left for the reasons of momentum that we saw earlier okay 
questions. <laughs> so, Julie, your shoulder. Yes. Um, no movement at all. So, I'm here, as close to horizontal as I can get. Remember which elbow I like. So it's here. And I rotate. All core. My entire torso. My shoulder is is safe. It's stationary. Um, do it. So yeah. And even when I did the, the super round, when I come around behind the board, my arm's still here. It's allowed to be bent when we're doing our turns. It's not allowed to be bent when we're paddling straight, but it's allowed to be bent when we're turning. Okay. 